Hey, it's Jay Foss, and I am starting a five-part series that will focus on overrated and underrated. Now, for each color, I'll pick at least five heroes that are overrated and underrated, and uh, within those categories, I'll include at least one three, one four, and one five star. So, about five to seven per category, per color, and uh, I want to just emphasize underrated does not necessarily mean they're the greatest hero ever, <laughs> and overrated doesn't mean the hero is bad. So uh, while I do this, I will have to go to various sources to pull cards I don't have, and if you're familiar with GOAT online, it's currently down, so the transitions will be not always be smooth, so just a heads up if you notice that, but... Here we go. First up for red overrated, I have Volermork. Uh, Volermork is from season four and uh, he produces fiends at slow speed, which is pretty much all he does. Um, I, d I do see him a lot in three star tournaments, in particular Rush and occasionally Bloody battle now theoretically his special should be good in bloody battle if he was faster but he is not <laughs> so um basically especially in rush there's just better options like if you're looking through three stars for rush and comparing him to sudri who does huge damage um even a hero like Bashan, who's great at mana control in all three formats, Yahanjir or Jahanjir, um, he just has a lot of competition in Bloody and Rush, and he doesn't provide buffs. So basically, there's just a better option for. I know he's slow, and normally slow is good in Rush, but I would argue that you should be using Sudri, Jahanjir, Bashan. You know, E done even um, for Rush, even if you're running mono. This just isn't that impactful of a special. And the amount of turns in Bloody Battle or Rush it would take for him to get to the damage equivalent of his peers is just astronomical. So that's why I have Volermork for the first red on the overrated list. Next up for red overrated, I have Carol. Now, I don't think anybody or not a lot of people would say this hero's great. I do see her occasionally in Bloody. I have seen some things in line and on the forums about her being okay or serviceable. And I don't even think she's in that serviceable class. I think her and Shale from Ninjas are probably the two worst red four stars overall in my opinion, and part of the reason why is this special. Now it is, or the main reason why is this special. Now, this reduced mana of the target by 25%, really, a skill like that is way better on defense than it is on offense. Um, and I don't think this hero is a defensive hero because the special would be hard to control now. So you basically have a mismatch of a defensive skill and an offensive skill. So some synergy issues within the card itself. But my main issue is this delayed damage. So 312 times 3 is 936. So you basically have a delayed dot after 3 turns of uh, 936. Okay. At fast speed. Now, there are actually other heroes that do damage over time or dot to 3, right? And I think... Ultimately, they have better effects. Now, Proteus, for example, does 981 damage over three turns before emblems, and his effect is extremely powerful. You look at a hero like Jabbar from the Sands, you know, he does more dot and has a little bit of upfront damage, so and it begs a question, if you're waiting three turns for this damage... And you need another hero to potentially set it off preemptively. 
why would you not run just two heroes that can do more damage, you know? Um, like, why not just run Gormek and then Scarlet or something? Or, you know what I mean? Like, you're, you're taking a hero who has his entire damage is delayed by three turns when you could be hitting them for better damage right away. And that though for those reasons, that's why I have Carol in the overrated um category. Now continuing. Alright, and moving on well before I move on to the next one, I forgot to mention this for Carol. That's fifteen hundred plus damage over time over two turns. <laughs> So while Carol's waiting to do 930-something, a hero like this has already done 1,500 at the same speed and is readily available for the most part. So anyway, moving on to the next one. For overrated red, I have Rockamush. And I don't see this guy too often, <clears throat> but it's another one that's fast, but it just isn't worth using he doesn't give buffs for buff booster he's not particularly good in rush compared to the good rush heroes they have for four star red like Cillian and colin costume or uh sumal sumli all are better rush options so and you're looking at uh you know maybe bloody battle but um the big thing is the damage here like there's a lot of randomness here and when you actually calculate this out into an expected value, it's abysmal. Like, it's really, really bad. Um, in terms of upfront damage, we're talking half the damage of someone uh, like Sumo and way, way less than Colin Costume's expected damage. Um, it just is really, really bad for upfront damage if you convert it into an expected value, even compared to other fast four-star heroes like uh, Jack O'Hare example just the regular Jack O'Hare not even the costume is fast and does almost twice the expected upfront damage over time and obviously you have to treat this I'm treating this like an expected value if everything hits that's great but it's that's not gonna happen very often so if you factor in the, the damage over time and add that in as an expected value it's still low. Um, it's still well below Khalil costume in terms of expected damage. It's just, it just really isn't there. It's, it's just terrible damage that's misleading because it says 200 to all. But when you actually put some math on all this, it's, it's terrible. I would not... I wouldn't use this hero for really anything unless he's the only red four star you have or something like that. Next up for red, getting into the five stars. For overrated, I have Balder. This hero did receive a buff, which is an increase to their stats at some point, I believe. Could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure. But boosts the health of the caster by a thousand. Um, deals 165 to a random enemy and resists direct mana reduction and you get the 165 to an enemy each turn as a boost to health now <clears throat> there are lots of heroes you can neutralize to where they do nothing you can block status effect you know black knight can taunt it but it's pretty rare that a hero can cast and just do nothing, even if there's no status effects in play. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's entirely possible that at average speed, and honestly, this is how it is most of the time, so I see this hero on defense, all you're going to get is 165 to one enemy at average speed. Because good players are going to be aware of this, and this is going to be... You know, you're not going to be able to exploit this. So you're, took, you're basically looking at... In an ideal situation, you cast it, boom, you get hit a hero, hit it somebody for 165. At the end of that turn, 
you have boosted health 165 again. But basically, you're looking at four turns on an average speed hero to exceed the damage of Mariana, the season one sniper who's fast, even before her damage over time. Let me, let me say that again. You're looking at three to four turns if you get the ideal situation for Balder to exceed regular Mariana's damage. Season one hero. Now, are there ways that you can build offensive teams with other health boosters to where you get that 165 for an extended period of time? Sure, but you're still looking at, you know, if limit, limit broken, emblemed, all that, you're still looking at maybe, if you're lucky, 300 per turn when there's other average speed heroes that can just smack you for huge numbers. I mean, I just don't get it. I've never gotten this hero. I think this is one of the weaker five stars of the, the sort of newer five stars. But, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll get, okay, I'll get 225 a turn or I can have an average hero that hits three and does, you know, 1,500 damage instantly. And so I, I don't like, I don't personally like this hero. I think this hero's definitely not worth it in any situation on defense and also overrated on offense because it requires very specific teams to utilize this special skill effectively and even when used effectively it's still not that effective and last up for overrated red i have nadezda now i will start by saying i do not think this hero is bad at all i think it's kind of a cool hero to have but i don't think that it's as good as people are making it, or they initially think it is. And starting with this Mana Charge 1, it's just very underwhelming. Um, I never really thought Tier, the Red Star Tier from Season 3, was a difficult defensive hero. And this is basically a worse version. Charge 1, Mana Charge 1 is of Tier, so... Basically, charge one is overwhel underwhelming to me. And mana charge two is not bad. I mean, you got basically the equivalent, for all practical purposes, mana charge two on the magic heroes is essentially slow speed. And I want to distinguish this because th it's different on the ninjas. So, like, the ninja charge two, you can nine tile them, I think, with a level 11 mana troop, right? So you basically can get them functionally fast relatively easily for the Ninja Charge 2. Magic Charge 2 is not like that. Magic Charge 2 is essentially slow. In fact, if you're comparing them to the Ninjas, the Magic Heroes are essentially, at least approximately, it's getting Charge 1 and Charge 3 from the Ninjas. And one of the strengths of the Ninjas is the fact you can functionally fast Charge 2. So that's why in general you're going to see several of the Magic Heroes on here. But getting down to Charge 2... That's a good, in a vacuum, that's a good special. 44% chance to get revived. They heal a little bit. They take less damage. Now, the, why do I like and use Albrecht and Mother North, but I probably wouldn't use this hero as much is because in Rush, like, it's going to take forever to get to charge to. Um, if you don't know in Rush, the charge heroes typically charge slower. And basically, it's going to take two full cycles for Nadezda to get to this special in Rush. So, let's say you have, you know, a level 11 mana troop on her in Rush. Or she gets one of her little magic stacks that helps her out, whatever. But basically, you're looking at 12 tiles to get to this in Rush. And when you consider that, you know, you can six-tile Alfric and 
you know, all these other destructive slow heroes, it kind of takes her out of her element where she would be good. In fact, I'd much rather this just be a slow hero that has charge 2, honestly, because charge 1 is underwhelming. And if it was a slow hero that had that as charge 2, I'd honestly be fine with it. I think it'd be a cool pickup to have for Rush, but because this is handicapped so bad in Rush, because of the charging mechanic and her actually charging slower, that's the main reason. That and charge 1 being underwhelming. Now, if she was purple and had other heroes to help her get going, like Grimble or Ludwig or um, Nullfot or something, maybe, but I just don't see this as an elite hero. I, I just see this as a an okay, maybe below average hero that's sort of being overhyped because of the charge 2. And where you want to use the charge 2 the most is Rush. It's not very effective in Rush, so you're like, okay. Well, looking at the rest of the special, where else can I use her? Okay, maybe I can use her in Bloody Battle. Nope, her special is heavily tied to healing on both charges. So you're kind of left with just a general use hero that's fine, but it's definitely not in the conversation for um, top tier or even above average in my view. She's she's okay. Now moving on to red underrated. So maybe a little underutilized, underestimated. I'm starting with Azar, particularly Azar's costume. And one of the main reasons why is at the three star level I believe, and I'm looking at my spreadsheet right now as I'm doing recording this, that she is the only fast hit three, three star. The only one. I mean, if you think of all the other ones, at least as of recording this, which is late March 2022, if you want a multi-hitter and you want to, don't want to have to make more than three matches, generally speaking, to get them charged... And this is literally your only option, generally speaking. Now, for a multi-hitter in that class, her hit is just barely below average. So it's, But again, she's faster than all of them, so it kind of makes up for it. This second part of the special, as I mentioned, we discussed the overrated. I don't like on offense, but I do like on defense. So... I think you're looking at a hero because of her speed and her unique ability to hit three at fast speed as a decent bloody battle option, but also potentially on rush defense. Now, rush defense has been shaken up a lot by Trevil, and you could definitely make the argument you should just run five Trevils every time. And you could also make the argument that Bashan is better on defense, um, and he is, quite honestly, especially for rush, and he gives buffs, but kind of a hero that if you're missing some of the other heroes can play a lot of different roles in the uh, three-star tournaments. Now next up for underrated, I have underrated red, I have E. Dunn, and it's kind of a similar story, except she's obviously average. Uh, I have E. E. Dunn as the fifth hardest hit three for three stars across all colors. For guaranteed damage, I have her behind Maeve from Slayers, Skrekok from Villains, Noral from Slayers, and uh, Yao, who was just released in the War of Three Kingdoms. So, um, yeah, again, uh, suffering a little bit from competition because of how good Sudri and Bashan over Sudri and Bashan are in Rush, and how good. Bashan and Skrekok is in buff. I know I'm making, I'm butchering all these names, but you have a high damage hit three with a good secondary effect that's useful in pretty much all the formats. So I do think a little underutilized uh, here with E done. Continuing with red, underrated, I have Ferrant. Now, if you're in a top alliance or even a competitive alliance, not necessarily even a top one, you may be seeing this guy in war and you're like, how is he 
underrated. Well, I for those who aren't seeing him, which I assume there are some, it really is a tough special to deal with at the tank position. Um, he is probably these in the top 100 alliances, and I, I'm in Wolves of the North, and we typically fight in the... Looking at all the unofficial rankings, we're probably like fight between 20 and 40th in war in terms of where we are in war and this is the second mo most difficult tank that we see quite honestly and that includes all the five stars so i think he's a better tank than liz elizabeth i think he's a better tank than vanda i think and you even see alliances in the top five um occasionally run fair now there are a lot of things that make him difficult the main thing is this. So when I believe Team Korea ran 30 Ferents, they had 30 Ferent defenses that could become undispellable. Um, I believe you can do this with, I don't know all of them off the top of my head, but there are, there are a lot of several choices of five, good five stars that you can do to make this counterattack undispellable. Um, if this guy fires, it's just a nightmare. We set up Ferent defenses in our... Alliance and did some private matches, and a lot of people, including myself, have low like lower win percentages against Farron than we do like perfectly constructed null fod teams. So I don't think this is a secret, but if you're in a mid level alliance or just aren't seeing this guy a lot, this is one of the best tanks in the game right now at any star level. In fact, people are putting him as the tank for not only this week's tournament, which is four-star buff booster without yellow. I'm tanking him, even though blue's allowed. You saw him at tank a lot last week. In the five-star buff booster, no purple. And um, I'm telling you, this is, this is an annoying tank. <laughs> um, it just continually cuts your mana. It's so hard to charge if you get behind and... When you can make it undispellable, it's it's a nightmare. So even though I think most people know he's good, I'm still putting him on here as uh, underrated because he's damn effective at pretty much everything in terms of four-star tournaments and can even flex into five-star buff booster um, bloody type roles. So have him as underrated. Moving on now to red, five stars for underrated. The first one up is Jean Francois. Now I do have emblems on him, so it is a little deceptive. But 356 burn damage over two turns, that's okay. Um, it's not, I was gonna say it's not gonna light the world on fire, but it does. <laughs> but uh, 356 burn damage, it is a quick developing damage over time, which is what you always want with Dot damage if it's over like six or seven turns it'll probably never get there you want the two and three turn dots if you have the option um this all allies get defense status ailment protection for f four turns is extremely relevant at the higher tiers where you're seeing a ton of morale and frigs and even things like white rabbit um the other yellow that's from season four i think it's like zeneca or something but you're seeing a ton of minus defense on defense, and he counters that pretty well. Um, he also has a lot of value in buff booster. I mean, all allies get 94% defense against ice. All allies get defense to SAM with protection, and he has a link. So kind of a all-around sleeper. Um, I even had him on my defense for a short time in uh, Wolves of the North as a flank before I got Elizabeth. And honestly, I'm not sure if Elizabeth is uh, better because I'm getting one shot almost every time. But um, definitely underrated. As you tell me in a lot of places, um, you know, 871 with full emblems and a crit link, you know, he might even make your Titan team. So just generally overall underrated. Staying with the red five stars and moving on to 
Anzog. I recall when Anzog was released, um, people said he was the worst red hero of the month ever. And um, he's definitely one of those heroes who I think has had his value increase. And part of that is largely twofold. And I think one being that there were more ways to set him up well now. More minus defense plus attack heroes uh, in in red, but also in all colors if, you, if you're not running uh, just red. So I think that's the factor is that a lot of... He, there's a lot more setup for him now than there was to get this healing part to work effectively now. I wouldn't run him as my only healer by any means, but that brings me to my second point where these heroes that can nine tile, so level 20, generally speaking, level 23 mana troop for average speed. These heroes that can nine tile that damage a little bit and provide survivability are pretty in right now. You know, you think of using heroes like Caitlyn and, and Inari and, you know, things like that. They're kind of come making a comeback in terms of being popular because the high-end defenses are so fast. So when you're having, even though it may not be a huge amount of damage, having a hero that can provide some damage and some support, and maybe even a lot of damage and support if it's set up optimally, you know that they're kind of they're kind of popular. Um, so I definitely think he is in the underrated category. And finally, for underrated red, I have Asterius. 360, Asero was buffed along with the villains, I believe, were buffed in two cycles, and I think he got the second cycle. Um, 360, full damage to target nearby. My estimate has this as the fourth highest damage for a hit, hit three in terms of guaranteed upfront damage. And then, you know, you, the second part reduced the duration of buffs. Okay, that, that may help. But not a big, not a game changer. And then you throw in a little minus defense and a dot. So you get, when this hero came out, I was doing written reviews for my old alliance, and I rated him as A to A plus then. I think this is the second best red for uh, flank on defense behind only Octros. Um, he has... I mean, that's just big, big damage. And minus defense, even though it's a small amount, is always a valuable skill. So big damage, valuable secondary skill, minus defense. One of the hardest hitting hit three. His family bonus is great. Um, if you compare him with another villain, and there is another red five-star villain, uh, Isrod. Um, the family bonus heals a portion of damage dealt. So you think if... He's a multi-hitter, so more chances for Deprock. And if you're pairing him with another villain, you know, it's sort of like a Fenrir or Leonidas type effect where he can actually even heal himself. So um, very good hero, I, I would say, is one of the best overall reds in the entire game. But in terms of defense, I'd put him only behind Octros in terms of a flank. Um, and why I don't see more Asterius flanking Null Fods, I, I simply don't know. Maybe because everybody got Octros when he came out, but um, this is a great hero. And that will wrap up the red underrated overrated. Next color will be blue. Uh, if it's popular and if... Yeah, we'll go from there. Thanks for watching.